Kaede will be telling us why Man City fans are over the moon. He has that and other stories on Sports for Me. Absolutely, Melinda. They are on top of the world, but let's begin with Nigeria. The country's Super Four can squeeze the past the host nation Cote d'Ivoire to win the Wafu Women's Cup 5 4 by a penalty shootout after the game ended one all in regulation time. Tenerife striker Angie Coco Nguessan put the host ahead in the 42nd minute with a superb free kick, but Uche Nakanu equalized for Nigeria in the dying moments of the game at the state of Robert Shampro. In the penalty shootout, Amarachi Okonkwo, Miriam Ibrahim, Alice Ogebe, Joy Bukiri, and Captain Evelyn Wabuoku made no mistake from the spot while the Ivorians lost one of their kicks. The Nigeria delegation will return to the country on Sunday. And Manchester City have made history after becoming the first male team to win the domestic treble in England. Pep Guardiola's boys defeated Watford six whopping nil in the FA Cup final played at Wembley, adding to the League Cup and the Premier League title already in the kitty. Goals from David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, and Gabriel Jesus, and a an hat trick from England forward Raheem Sterling gave the citizens an emphatic victory over Watford. Manchester City has signed off in style after dominating English football this season. And world number two Rafael Nadal breezed past Stefano's Sissi pass to reach the Italian Open final. Nadal beat his Greek opponent 6-3 and 6-4 in the semi-final played in Rome. A Spaniard who is in contention for his first title in 2019 will face Novak Djokovic in the final. And world number one, Novak Djokovic, set up an intriguing final with Rafael Nadal after a 6-3, 6-7, victory over Diego uh, Schwartzman at the Italian Open. Djokovic, who saved too much points in his quarterfinal win over Juan Martin del Potro with a spirited Schwartzman in Rome in 2 hours and 31 minutes. Schwartzman provided a stern test for the Serbian with a series of impressive drop shots. And that's all on Sports News. Back to you, Melinda. Many thanks, Kayode. South African President Samuel Maranposa has followed up on his election pledge to tackle corruption by appointing a veteran lawyer to lead a newly formed anti-graft unit. Mr. Ramaphosa promised to root out corruption cited by rating agencies and investors as a major obstacle to economic reforms needed to turn around growth, which flatlined in the last decade under former president Jacob Zuma. Anger over allegations of widespread corruption during Mr. Zuma's presidency propelled Mr. Ramaphosa into office in February last year. His African National Congress won last week's parliamentary election, but its majority slipped to its lowest in 25 years. And still in South Africa, Hollywood star Anil Shachiga has been attacked by a man who kicked him in the back at a sports event that the action hero was hosting. The bodybuilder and former politician was chatting with fans at the Santon Convention Center in Johannesburg when a man took a flying leap and kicked him high in the back. But Shachiga said he thought he was jostled by the crowd, which happens a lot. And he told organizers that he would not press charges. 
The actor is in Johannesburg for the annual Arnold Classic Africa and International Multi-Sports Festival. And it's celebration time for Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who is thanking voters for re-electing his Conservative coalition in what has been described as a shocking result at the federal polls. Prime Minister Morrison told supporters he has always believed in miracles, as partial results showed that his Liberal National Coalition is close to a majority. Meanwhile, the leader of Australia's opposition Labour Party, Mr Bill Shorten, has accepted defeat and congratulated his opponent. Although the ruling centre-right coalition, led by Prime Minister Morrison, looks set to return to power in defiance of polling predictions, it's unclear whether it will be able to form a majority government. Exit polls had suggested a narrow win for the Labour Party for the first time in six years. And the main news again. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, today said there are evidence of plans to destabilize the administration of President Buhari and the main opposition party, PDP, is asking him to back off his claims with facts. Also today, police rescued a Syrian man kidnapped since April the 30th in Uran local government area of Akwaibom State. And that's the news at 10 tonight. On behalf of the team, it's good night.